Have you ever wondered what the very first 3D print was? Well, though the origins of 3D printing go back to the 1960s or beyond, it's widely considered that when he released an actual 3D printer in 1986, Chuck Hall became the father of 3D printing. Now, what amazes me is he got the idea by using, get this, a glue gun to make a toy for his daughter, layer by layer, just like our current FDM 3D printers. Fortunately, we've come a long way in what we 3D print since then. And when it comes to 3D printing repositories online, well, there's none older or more storied for good or bad than Thingiverse.com. Nearly 20 years after that first 3D printer, Thingiverse.com was launched in November of 2008 by Zach Smith and Bree Pettis of MakerBot. Now, it was the first fully put together site where 3D printer hobbyists, along with laser engraving enthusiasts, well, they could all find free files from other people to help fuel their hobby passions. Now, granted, there weren't a lot of people with home 3D printers at the time, but for those that did, Thingiverse made it so much more accessible, and it didn't hurt that it was also a great advertisement for MakerBot. There is some doubt as to what file is really the oldest on Thingiverse, and that's because apparently back in the day they kind of reused a few of the earlier files in some of the contests, but whether they were concerned about a number of files they were having or maybe removing some junk, I couldn't find a good answer as to why they did it. And if you have more information about it, well, let us all know in the comments. Well, what I did was I went one by one through the first 100 things on Thingiverse, and I figured that was the best way I could find to narrow down the search. And out of the current active 59 files in that range, only 25 or 3D print files. And after looking through them all, I wanted to see what they looked like. So I thought I'd share them with you, and we could all take a look at the 25 oldest, maybe, 3D print files on Thingiverse. This video is brought to you by AE Juice, where you can get animation tools, plugins, and presets for nearly every video editing software on the market. Find out more and get a discount by using the links in the description of this video. On October 19th, 2008, a user by the name of Fuki created thing number seven. Now this is currently the oldest file of any type that I could find. It's a really cool file with a long name called First Stellation of a Dodecahedron. It's also, unfortunately, a laser project. No, it's not how this works. A few weeks later though, on November 7th, 2008, two users uploaded 3D printing files. Thing number 36 is by user Hoken, whose name on Thingiverse is Zach Hoken, and he's still active and posting new files even today. He gave us our very first look at the future of 3D printing, a mug. And well, the actual name is Mini Mug, which is appropriate since it's pretty tiny, more of a thimble, but hey, it works. Then we got into our first actual practical 3D print project. And that was thing number 38 by user Nophead, also known as Chris Palmer. And it's a 3D printed T-slot cleaner. Well, it's a neat little tool to help clean out the sawdust and the slots on a milling machine or a lathe cross slide. The very next day, November 8th, 2008, user Hoken must have been working all night because he uploaded not just one or two files, but six new 3D print files. He locked up thing numbers from 46 to 51 and gave us some practical and some not so practical prints. Number 46 is a gear, so he might actually be responsible for that gear obsession that some users seem to have. Next was number 47, and that's a wine glass, which gave us our first chance to print something probably not food safe. Then 48 is sticking with the rep wrap thing, and it's a power ring, which is pretty cool. 49's a very sturdy coat hook, and number 50 is a door handle that could be useful if you have a door without a handle. I should point out here that 
I did try to keep every model exactly as I downloaded them, unless the description told me otherwise. And that's why number 51 is a very stylized and very small RepRap logo. And I do mean small. Originally, I intended to just print a dozen or so of these first 3D prints on Thingiverse, but then I figured, well, it's only 25 prints out of the first 100. And as you can see, without making any changes, most of them are kind of small. A couple of days later, on November 10th, 2008, a few new users finally got into the action. Thing number 60 is from user Kintel, aka Marius Kintel, and he gave us a much smaller, dare I say, Meta wine glass. And yeah, that's the name, Meta wine glass. And, well, it maybe should have been printed in vase mode, but there weren't any instructions, so this is what I got. Knophead was back with number 61, a heart-shaped box with a lid that set up all of 3D printing for gift giving. And then number 63 is courtesy of Brie, a 24-sided sphere that actually looks pretty cool. Kintel also uploaded number 64. It's a twisted star box, and it kind of had some issues. <laughs> so far, this is the only one that I haven't printed. Now, I did read through some of the comments, and there was some confusion even back in the day, and I did get some non-planar edge errors, but when I fixed them, everything appeared to be solid. And this also appears to be the first instance of a designer telling us in the comments that they uploaded something they never actually printed. So remember, check those directions, comments, and pics. Skipping past that one though, November 11th saw two more uploads, starting with number 72 by Notpad again, who gave us a very practical, if not really big, lathe chuck grip. Now, I'm going to try this on my lathe eventually. And then there was 73, and that was by Brie. It was a really, really tiny bracelet right here. Now, it failed on my first attempt, but an inner outer brim helped it to print, and then I couldn't get the brim off, so, well... There you go. November 12th gave us only one 3D print file, and everything about this one is kind of an enigma. The model is called Decahedron, and it's by someone with the username that is simply what appears to be a period. The description says the model is a decahedral polywell shape, and it's the only file I really felt like I needed to not only resize but reorient off of one of the points just to try to get a decent print. Even on the large bed of the Bamboo H2D, it originally took up nearly the entire bed, so I shrunk it by 80%, mainly to try not to waste a ton of filament if it failed, and no directions for supports, but I did add a brim, and yep, yeah, I called it fail. Um, this is about as much as I got there, so moving on. November 14th gave us two more 3D models by Knophead. Number 84 is a screw top pot with a lid that actually works really great. And number 85 is this really cool sky hook. It's a three-part print and it's for attaching a basket to your ceiling. Now, I believe this may be the first upload of a 3D print with a sacrificial bridge for the opening and also the first possible 3D print with a 608 skateboard bearing included in the design. Knophead also posted the last two 3D prints for 2008 on November 16th. He started with thing number 87, and this is a tree crutch to attach to a pole and support a heavy fruit-laden tree branch. And then there was number 88, which is a utility meter key for industrious UK homeowners to be able to read their own meters. There are plenty of occasions in any video where just the right text or wrong text can make or break what you're trying to accomplish. Not to mention making sure that you have the right permissions for everything that you use. That's why I'm letting you know about AE Juice and all of the incredible products that they offer. And I'm not just talking about paid stuff. The products they're offering for free could be all that a lot of people would ever need. 
Going beyond that though, if there's just one or two things you want, you can pick them up by themselves or try out the all access subscription model to get literally everything they offer, including all third party assets, tutorials and more. But the real star of the show is the I want it all bundle lifetime. There are 103 assets packed into this bundle and that would cost you over $8,000 if you purchased them separately. But for $149, you get them all, including lifetime copyright permissions. And they offer a 14-day, 100% happiness guarantee. Every title, callout, graphic, and sound in today's video came from this package using Adobe Premiere. But you can use it all in After Effects, Sony Vegas, Final Cut, Adobe Rush, DaVinci Resolve, and more. They make it super simple to use any asset with their AE Juice Pack Manager plugin. I'll have links to all of this, including those free assets and a discount code in the description. Getting back to the models, here's where things get a little convoluted. Remember I commented earlier about Thingiverse supposedly reusing some of those thing numbers? Well, two months after the very first 3D print was posted, that mini mug at number 36, a new user to the 3D print space emerged on January 6, 2009. Username Replicator posted six new files that day, all of them paying homage to MakerBot, and somehow they got the distinction of starting with thing number two. That model is a pretty basic screwdriver that he even said wasn't good for big jobs, but it's still pretty cool. And then there was thing number three. Do you ever wonder what designers are thinking with the descriptions they post sometimes? <laughs> well, that's not new. Check out this description. It's an oblong sheet, about four inches long, slightly flared at the ends. You're not sure what the purpose is. One face is decorated with strange ridges and the whole piece is pierced by several square holes irregularly placed. Attractive though, isn't it? Sort of like a butterfly. Well... I believe this is actually supposed to attach to your MakerBot. I really don't have anything else to add. Oh, don't look so shocked. Moving on to thing number five by Replicator. It's the MakerBot hook. And he says it's kind of like a curtain hook. And I assume, again, this is supposed to attach to your MakerBot. Thing number eight is a MakerBot knob that apparently didn't have any real purpose except in just being a knob. Again, maybe to go on a MakerBot. Thing number 13 is a MakerBot key and Replicator says in the description it's a strangely crooked key. I honestly don't know if this was a commentary on the early MakerBot 3D printers or just the key itself. Who knows? And rounding out the first 3D prints on Thingiverse with thing numbers in the first 100, and that's this MakerBot coin, again by Replicator. This appears to be the first instance of a Maker coin, and if you don't know about those, just do a search. You're going to see a, a lot of them out there. The description for the coin says it could also be used as an eye patch, and at this point, I can't say I'm surprised. There you go. The first 25 3D prints ever posted to Thingiverse. Maybe. I hope you enjoyed the nostalgic look back at all of these prints and if only to see how far we've come. Thanks again to AE Juice for sponsoring this video and don't forget to check out my other videos here. Let's keep making new things and sharing them out there. Who knows? 15 years people may look back at some of the things we're making now with the same feelings of wonder as well as some confusion. Regardless, we can just tell them it was all part of the process as we learn, create, and amaze.